I'm Elizabeth Walker and I'm a collections manager. I'm head of um, the collections and access for the history and archaeology de uh, department in Angiotha Cymru National Museum, Wales. I'm also a research archaeologist specialising in Paleolithic and Mesolithic archaeology as well. So there's going to be a little bit of an angle from there as well. So um, what I'm going to be uh, talking about today is um, a fairly personal view on and approach that I've adopted over the past years towards the marking of finds. And um, it uh, looks at the standard and um, reality as I take it. So in Wales, we do have a standard which uh, is for the guidance uh, of, of depositing and creating archaeological archives. And it was drawn up in 2017 uh, by myself, along with other members of the National Panel for Archaeological Archives in Wales, which has CIFA representation and, and CIFA has gone on to endorse uh, these standards subsequently. The standard's very clear about the marking of finds, and it states that all finds must be marked or labelled with a unique identifier related to the archaeological project and or the repository, and also that all the finds must be marked or labelled as appropriate with project and context identifiers, and where relevant, the individual object identifier too. So when using um, the standard, and when I have discussion with those archaeologists who are intending to deposit archaeological archives with Amgedfa Cymru, I tend to work closely with the words as appropriate um, when discussing finds marking in particular. And the reason being that as a museum curator, um, I've observed that our conservator seems to have spent far more of her time removing markings from objects uh, than we uh, as curators have uh, spent in marking them over the past uh, 15 years. And as curators, I'm often very, very frustrated by the fact that objects are marked really inappropriately as well. So the approach that I've adopted for Angiotha Camry is to rarely mark anything at all. Um, we certainly only mark in exceptional uh, circumstances. I'm not advocating never marking, just uh, when needed. And I think it's really pertinent here to note that Amgyadva Camry also doesn't issue any accession numbers until we've actually got the finds. So we're never going to be um, asking for finds to mark. That's a, a quirk of um, the Welsh audit uh, system. Um, so um, I'll admit, though, that we very rarely even mark an accession number on fines. Um, and I think it's, it's for this reason that um, people like Duncan, Claire and Sam have um, heard me go on a little bit like a stuck record on this topic in some of the Archaeological Archives uh, forum meetings that I've been asked to uh, present my case uh, to you today. So as a museum, um, we shouldn't just be looking at archaeology. After all, we would never think about marking many categories of our museum collections with numbers. So why are we doing it for archaeology? We wouldn't mark our eggs, we wouldn't mark our shells. And there are so many finds. We'd never mark a coin, we'd never mark any metal finds, for instance. So why are we marking um, other items? And why do we get so het up about this as archaeologists too? So some examples here of um, why it might be best not to mark a find. These are Neanderthal teeth from Pont Newydd Cave in Denbyshire, quarter of a million year old, and they've been marked, yet none of those markings would actually get you to the object on the collection database in the museum. The object's been marked with um, its generic accession number. There is a finds number and um, the site code there. But if you look closely at this incisor on the left, you'll see that the numbers are actually obscuring stone tool cut marks. Um, no consideration was given when this number was marked on the object. And you can see the ink has per per penetrated into a fracture in the tooth that now that ink can't be removed. For glass, oops, um, these are historic finds 
And the top ones are very heavily marked, um, destroying the aesthetics of, of these uh, for display, the bottom ones being left unmarked. And these, these are some absolutely stunning uh, arrowheads, Br Bronze Age arrowheads from the Breach Farm Archers uh, grave in the Vale of Glamorgan. And as published in the slide on the left, you can see all those awful markings just showing through on that, those objects. And our conservator has spent quite some time trying to scrub those numbers off so that we can get them uh, on display in their, their pristine um, position um, as they are now for display at St Fagans. And I think our conservator and several students spent several months just systematically removing object, numbers from objects ahead of us creating uh, the new displays you can see at St Fagans. So do we actually need to be defacing all of these objects by marking these numbers on everything that uh, before collections are into the museum? I'd really argue, no, we don't. Instead, only mark items that absolutely have to be marked. Post-excavation teams should be discussing the approach that the specialists are going to take when writing their reports to determine what risks are involved for the loss of information. This might dis end up with the decision that you do need to mark something on it. But more often than not, I think there are other simple ways that we can manage um, these fines, which not only save time, save money, uh, better for the objects ultimately. And this can involve clearly um, marking the packaging, and this is absolutely fundamental. When writing a flint report recently for a commercial organization, I snapped the flints that I wanted to look at more closely by mo mobile phone. We've all got the mobile phones in our pockets. So if I thought there was risk, take a snap, match it back up straight away afterwards. So guarantee that you're not going to be returning them to the wrong bag. Other times I've made a quick layout with fines, numbers, and just photographed that. And in the past, people often just used to do an outline of the find on the back of the finds bag too. I'd advocate against um, marking human remains too. Exceptionally and occasionally, we will need to mark things, especially perhaps potsherds if the vessels from different contexts might be being um, reconstructed. Or for instance, if I'm doing refitting for a large lithic assemblage, I would mark uh, the lithics then. But rather than just systematically advocating that everything should be um, marked in, in standards, I think we just need to be much more on a use by use um, basis. After all, in a museum and a spectrum guidance, and um, this is all about risk management and we can manage risk in ways that don't involve necessarily marking numbers on fines. You mark all your packaging clearly. All of the categories that are in our standards can be marked onto the bags, onto the labels, onto the boxes, and we'll use that as, as a, an approach. And we give visitors really detailed instructions on handling um, to make sure that they um, don't uh, put those collections at risk too. Um, a museum, we um, have detailed records of all of the finds in, in methods like this, all um, managing uh, that uh, in process. So archeological um, collections are after all being kept to be used. So I think it's important for us to consider our current and also our future uses. I briefly mentioned aesthetics, but even more importantly, science. Science is key, especially for the Paleolithic and Mesolithic periods that I'm studying. Um, radiocarbon dating can be completely messed up if unknown lacquers are used. Use wear and residues can be destroyed, obscured, by marking finds, denying opportunities for future science and future study and analysis. And so it seems obvious to me that the less we do um, to our finds, the more information we'll be actually be able to extract from them now and in the future. And of course, this doesn't um, prevent finds from being marked in the future if they should be required. So my case is, that our standards should be fluid and adapted 
um, starting with a minimal approach and then um, numbers marked if in the future. And even as a Paleolithic archaeologist, I'd even consider advocating against even washing some finds now. Uh, nowadays, that ancient DNA is being recovered from soils and even from a 30,000 year old pendant. So the less marking, the fewer chemicals, the fewer lacquers we use, the better as we head towards um, an increase in future knowledge. And this is perhaps my vision for how we as archaeologists um, might be conducting our excavations in the future. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you.